Hi, so I want to make a quick video tonight to talk about dependency injection and whether or not uh, we should use it in uh, JavaScript. So if you're not familiar with uh, dependency injection, dependency injection is actually very popular right now in a lot of the statically typed languages from the .NET world, for instance, uh, C Sharp, uh, Ninjact, uh, Unity, there's a ton of uh, very popular uh, dependency injection frameworks uh, that you can use uh, with uh, the, you know, the .NET ecosystem as well as in the Java ecosystem as well. And one of the things I thought was interesting was that uh, a lot of the same problems that you'd use dependency injection for in a statically typed language are actually some of the same reasons why you might want to use them in a language like JavaScript as an example. And for whatever reason, uh, dependency injection frameworks don't seem to be as popular in, uh, in the JavaScript world as they are in, let's say, the .NET world. But uh, I decided to, to do a, a quick example tonight to talk about you know, what it is and how you can use it. So if we take a look over here, I can see that I have a constructor or factory function that I'm using to create an object. And what this object is, is essentially it's a shopping cart. And if we go and take a look at this, you know, I've got a method in here for adding items to the cart, removing items from the cart, uh, getting a subtotal, and also uh, getting the taxes for that. And then I pass that out as a, as a new object. So one of the things you might run into in the real world, as an example, is that if you're trying to calculate taxes, it's going to vary uh, from location to location. So every municipality, whether it's a city, county, state, uh, or even another country, they all have different uh, tax schemes that they use uh, when they're trying to calculate taxes. And so, you know, the algorithms for that are, are endless. Most likely, uh, the way that you do it in a real e-commerce world is you have a database that basically figures out what these different rates are. And then what you would do is uh, essentially at runtime where you're going to calculate the, the value uh, of the taxes that need to be paid, uh, you just would kind of do that once it's time to actually figure out, you know, what the, the grand total is for all the items that are, let's say, in a shopping cart. So what I've done in this example um, is I have this constructor function, and then I've created a very simple function here for calculating the tax, and I'm just setting it to 11%. And what I'm doing right here is in my constructor, I'm actually passing that in as this property tax repository. And then inside of the, uh, uh, the factory function, I'm actually using that to actually calculate the tax either on the total or if I just want to get the taxes back out. And the nice thing about this, this is flexible, it's loosely coupled, so if I need to swap that out with another function, I can do that. But the most common reason why you want to use this is for testing. And so something that's very common is, for instance, if you're trying to do something where you're interacting with a database or you're calling an external service. If you're running through, let's say, a CI CD process, uh, you may not have uh, access to, to that database or to that service when you're running through a test. And so you want to be able to mock that up. And there's some great libraries actually for mocking things like that up in the, the Node.js ecosystem, as an example. So there's a very popular library called SignOn where it's very easy to, uh, to mock things up. But for this example, uh, I'm just using what's something I call poor man's uh, dependency injection. And that's a term I came up with uh, so that, you know, uh, if you're not using a set uh, dependency injection framework, but you want to be able to have that type of behavior in your objects, it's actually quite easy to do. And so for this example, I'm just passing it in. And then in the function uh, itself for creating the cart, what I'm just doing is I'm just grabbing that off of here. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I have a couple of uh, methods here I'm calling to get the subtotal, to get the taxes on this. And you can see here where I've added these items in here. They have different uh, quantities and prices. So I'm just going to run this by saying node cart.js. And there we can see we get the subtotals and everything out. So let's say... I forgot to pass this in. Maybe I don't have a tax repository. Uh, I'm just going to send in, I can send in an empty object. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to send in an empty object here. So let's cut that out. And let's try running this again. So we see we have a problem here because it's trying to calculate these taxes and there's no function here to process that. 
So what we can do is we can actually set up uh, defaults for this. So what I'm going to do is if for whatever reason, if we forget to pass this in, then I want to set up some defaults. So I happen to have some code that I've pre-written here. So I have this default tax repository uh, that I'm just setting to a very simple function. In this case, I'm not returning any taxes. We'll just pretend, pretend this was Amazon for their first 20 years. They're not collecting any sales taxes. And then what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if there's a property on that settings object. And if there is, then I just set the tax repository to whatever that value is. If there isn't, then I just use my default tax repository. So if I come in here and I try to run this again, now I'm actually getting values back and it's not erroring out. But uh, in a case like this, what you may actually want to do is actually fail out of this factory function. So for whatever reason, if somebody, if the developer, let's say, is using your cart, forgets to instantiate it with uh, this uh, default behavior or if injecting this dependency, what we may prefer to do is just to, you know, have the whole thing basically blow up on us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to test for that. And then if I can't find a property in here for the tax repository, I'm just going to throw an error. This, is, this function requires a tax repository to be passed into the constructor. So let me save this. I'm going to run this again. And now we're actually getting an error function. It's erroring out, and it's basically telling us why it's erroring out. It's because we didn't pass in this necessary tax repository process. So that is one of the ways that I usually handle dependency injection. Now, that being said, there's actually uh, there's a uh, pre-existing uh, dependency injection framework you might want to take a look at. Uh, called DI4JS, uh, and I'm going to just going to open this up here. Uh, let's see if I can find. Yes. So let me open this up. So this is an npm package you can use to include uh, the DI4JS library into a Node project, and you can see this example they have here in the README. This is pretty simple. They have some objects here they've created um, uh, using uh, the proto prototype style syntax uh, with uh, JavaScript. And then here what they're doing is they're wiring everything up. Uh, in this case, they have something here called auto-wired, uh, which they have turned to false. And then what they're doing is they're registering these specific uh, uh, you know, objects in here so that when you go to register the car here, it's making sure it's registering a car with a diesel engine. So that's, this is very common with uh, a lot of other dependency injection frameworks that I've seen. So this is also another way you might want to go about uh, doing this. So um, that, I hope it helps. If you're curious about dependency injection and how you'd use it or why you'd want to use it, uh, it's one of the reasons why I made this video. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like to see it, you can give me a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up. It helps the algorithms there over on YouTube. And uh, please, uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it, and have a nice evening.